Welcome back to another episode review of Goosebumps. If you're new here, I've done the first two episodes of Goosebumps, so feel free to check those out if you'd like. In this video, I'll be reviewing episode 3, called The Cuckoo Clock of Doom. So let's get into it. This episode originally aired on November 3rd, 1995, and was based on Goosebumps book number 28. It was directed by John Bell, who directed The New Addams Family, Honey I Shrunk the Kids TV Show, The Famous Jet Jackson, and Eerie Indiana, The Other Dimension, and many more. The episode starts off with our main character named Michael, who was played by John White, who was known for Afterwards, American Pie, Beta House, Boy Toy, and Are You Afraid of the Dark, The Tale of the Carved Stone, again as a boy who experienced time travel. And he also plays Steve in Season 2's The Haunted Mask 2. Michael is walking, bouncing his basketball, and jamming out to his Walkman when he loses his basketball and it goes into the woods. He hears kids laughing faintly. Who's there? Then he sees what looks like a pool of blood on a brick step, and naturally he touches it. He notices there's more blood puddles, so he starts to follow them. He sees that there's some blood on the bushes, and when he investigates further, some giant snake pops out at him and scares him, making him fall to the ground. Then his annoying little sister Tara comes out and says she got him and calls him Craig, which is jerk backwards, foreshadowing time moving backwards for him. His sister was played by Kristen Bone, who was known for Franklin, Roly Poly Oly, and Mean Girls. Mike asks what her problem is. Mike flips out and runs after Tara. Tara runs inside just in time before Mike sprays her with that red stuff. Their mom opens the door and yells at Mike. Tara says that he won't leave her alone, playing the victim. Their mom was played by Cynthia Bellevue. She's known for Caitlin's Way, Wind at My Back, X-Men the Animated Series, and the Dream Team. Mike tells his mom that it was Tara that's messing with him. Tara says he's lying. Then their mom questions Mike what he's doing with that paint and to clean up the mess on the door and himself. You good, almost as good as at your party. Mike then starts to remember his birthday party. Mike is with his goofy friends opening up his presents. Hey, I wonder if it's a CD. So Josh, football. <laughs> Henry was played by Christopher Chung, who pretty much just did this episode of Goosebumps, and Josh was played by Sam Hillwe, who also just did this episode. Mike opens up his presents, and it's a CD from Mona, who was played by Alyssa Gerbert was known for JFK Reckless Youth. You said it was lame and he threw it out, but now he'll probably like it now that he's in love. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's mom calls out for him to help her with the cake. Mike tells his mom that he doesn't want Tara there because she's ruining everything. His mom says that his friends seem to find her entertaining. She tells him to bring out the cake while she goes and gets the candles. Mike heads back out, but Tara grabs his ankle, tripping Mike, making him face plant into the cake, and of course, all of his friends laugh at him. <laughs> hey Michael, aren't you supposed to serve your guests first? <laughs> 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 then some movers tell Mike to move, snapping him out of his memory. It cuts to Mike's dad, unveiling this old-looking cuckoo clock, saying he's been waiting for a very long time. His dad was played by Larry Mannell, who was known for downsizing, flash forward, and suits. Ugly clock. Mike's dad says it's magical. Mike asks what the numbers are for, and his dad says they tell the ears. Mike says it's cool and touches the clock, but his dad tells Mike to not touch it. Mike questions how a clock can be magical. Strange old man built the clock over a hundred years ago, and he put a magical spell on it. But they say, whoever discovers the magic must beware. Oh. Oh. Seems to work fine. Anthony said there was something wrong with the clock, but he wouldn't tell me what it was. Tara then starts messing with the clock, and Mike's dad stops her and tells her that he doesn't want either of them touching the clock. Tara says she won't. Later on, Mike is heading upstairs to his room when he hears his dad yelling at Tara for touching the clock again. I told you not to touch this. If 
If I find that there's anything broken on this clock, you're in serious trouble. Which then gives Mike an idea on how to get back at his sister. At around midnight, Mike sneaks downstairs to mess with the clock, but steps on a toy. He makes it downstairs, but another jump scare, this time with the window. <sighs> he finally approaches the clock, and just when the cuckoo bird flies out, Mike snaps the head backwards, and says have fun explaining this one, Tara. The next morning, Mike rushes downstairs and is anxious to see if Tara is in trouble, but instead finds his parents hanging his birthday banner up. Mike says what's going on, his birthday was three days ago. Tara then says she gets to go to his birthday party. Mike says real funny joke. Michael, will you tell me what you want for breakfast? Because your friends are going to be here soon and I still have to pick up the cake. Alright, guys, the joke's over. What joke? Later on, Mike is reliving his 12th birthday party, just as before. Mike realizes this is all too weird, everything is happening all over again. Just then, his mom calls for Mike to help her with the cake, and Mike remembers what Tara is going to do, and says not this time. Mike runs into the kitchen, and Mike's mom gives him the cake to bring out. Mike thinks what's happening to him, maybe he's losing his mind. As Mike heads out, Tara again trips him, making him fall into his cake all over again. It cuts to Mike in bed, arguing with his parents. Mike is telling his parents he's caught in a time warp, but his mom just checks to see if he's warm, but he's not sick. His dad then says he's sorry he didn't like his birthday party. He didn't like it twice. Look, you guys gotta believe me. I woke up and it was three days ago. Michael, try to get some sleep, okay? You're gonna feel a lot better in the morning. Like I always say, tomorrow's another day. better be. Later on, Mike dreams he sneaks downstairs to where the cuckoo clock is, but when he opens the door, he starts screaming. This scream starts even before he opens his mouth. <coughs> Mike then starts running from something. turns around and sees the cuckoo clock, and then his sister pops out of the cuckoo clock door. Now that's pretty scary. <laughs> his mom rushes into his room, thinking he's probably just excited because his birthday is tomorrow. Then she sees the clock, and notices that it's 1201, and says it is his birthday, and then wishes him a happy 6th birthday. Six? Mike does his best Home Alone scream. Six-year-old Mike was played by Kyle Fairlie, who's known for One Week, Roly Poly Oli, Franklin, and Look Who's Talking Now. His dad runs in and asks if he's okay, and Mike looks at his dad and notices his hair. Hair! Mike says he can't be six, he's twelve. Of course you're six! No, I'm twelve! His dad says it's his birthday, let him be twelve if he wants to be. Then says, if he's six, where's Tara? His dad says, who's Tara? His mom just thinks it's Mike's invisible friend. Mike then runs to Tara's room and realizes that Tara is really gone because her room is just an office now. Mike realizes if Tara's gone, then he's next. His dad tells Mike to close his office door and go back to his room. Mike says that time is going backwards. His dad just thinks he has an active imagination. Mike figures out that the reason for all this is because the cuckoo clock's head is on backwards, so he runs to the room where the clock is in, but when he opens the door, he sees that it's gone. Cuckoo clock. We don't have a cuckoo clock. Uh, stupid! Don't call your father stupid. Not him, me! Dad's not gonna buy the clock for another six years. He's delirious. The antique store. 
That's where it is. I gotta get there. Mike tries to run to the antique store, but gets stopped by his dad, who puts him back in his room. The next morning, Mike is having the sixth birthday party with his friends. Mike is a 12-year-old stuck in a six-year-old body. An octopus! My time's up. Mona asks what's wrong, and Mike says he has to get out of here. He has to go to the antique store. Josh says what's an antique? Six-year-old Josh was played by Brandon Smith, who just did this episode of Goosebumps. Mike says he's getting younger by the day, but Mona says it's his birthday, that he's getting older. You don't understand. Today I'm six. Tomorrow I may be nothing. When you're nothing, can I have your present? Six-year-old Henry was played by Michael Ho, who is known for Control-Alt-Delete. Mike says he can have them all if he doesn't tell his mom where he's going, because he's busting out of here. Oh, where are you going? Never mind. Mike is running to the antique store, but is stopped by some creepy guy asking him for the time. The scary man was played by Steve W. Smith, who's known for Counter-Strike. Mike runs away from him and reaches the antique store. He sees the clock on the window display and is happy to see it. He tries to go in, but the door is locked and the sign says closed for vacation, and it looks like the creepy man is getting closer. Just then, a hand grabs Mike, but it's his dad. He says his friend snitched on him, and he can't believe he abandoned his birthday party. He says he knows he's not allowed down here by himself, and that he's very angry with him. I gotta get to the clock. It's very, very important. I don't even want to discuss it. I'm very disappointed in you. Come on. We're going home before your mother worries us off to death. Later on, Mike's dad is reading him Clifford. Like Goosebumps, it's also a scholastic property. Mike tells his dad to read him another story. His mom comes in, and is surprised Mike is still up. Mike is afraid to go to sleep. You're not gonna disappear. Tara did. Stop with this Tara. Who's Tara? Honey, maybe if you just read him one more story, it'll calm him down. I've been reading for two solid hours. Um, Dad, don't argue over me. It's not worth it. I'm not gonna be here much longer anyhow. His mom gets worried and checks to see if he's warm, but he's not. Good night, son. Not good night, The next morning, Mike wakes up, but realizes he's a baby. Baby Mike was played by Zachary Brian McQuaid, who just did this episode of Goosebumps. Mike is trying to figure out how to explain to his mom how to get to the antique store. I hope you're not running a fever. Hmm. Where's she going? Maybe I should check your temperature. Oh no! We go. Anything but that! <laughs> His dad walks in and suggests they all take a walk downtown to the antique store. And Mike is showing that he's happy with that idea. Well, let's not go to Anthony's. What? Well, I like Anthony's. What's wrong with Anthony's? Yeah, what's wrong with Anthony's? Anthony charges an arm and a leg. So give him an arm and a leg! Mike shows him that he's not being fussy and starts jumping around. Hurry up! Time's running out! Let's go to Anthony's. We're just gonna walk. <laughs> let's go! Let's go! Let's go! They walk to the antique store and head inside. Mike starts looking around for the clock and spots it. The owner, Anthony, who was played by Jake Roberts, who is known for sleepwalkers, and after the storm, shows them some tables. Mike says he's got a minute left and makes his way to the clock, and begins to climb it while his parents are distracted. Mike is at the top, but knocks the year 1988 off the clock. The clock reads 12 o'clock and the bird comes out. His parents notice Mike is up by the clock and his dad starts running towards him. Mike's dad comes in yelling at Mike, saying how many times does he have to tell him not to touch the clock. Mike is in disbelief, but happy he is back to being 12. Mike even kisses his dad on his bald head. I love you! Well, uh, I love you too, but keep your hands off my cuckoo. His mom comes in and Mike hugs her and tells her he loves her too. Mike says he'll go get Tara, but his mom says who's Tara? Mike runs to Tara's room, but it's still his dad's office. Mike's dad calls him over because he notices a flaw. They notice that the year 1988 is missing. Mike says that's the year Tara would have been born. His dad says, who's Tara? Mike says, nobody. So 
Terra has never been born. I suppose there is some way to go back in time and get her, right? I guess I probably ought to do that. And I will. One of these days. And that concludes episode 3 of Goosebumps. And I gotta say, this episode was pretty awesome. I love time travel stories like this, and I think it still holds up. It's not perfect, but it's still enjoyable. I love the little jokes they would throw in there, and I thought the acting was decent enough. Let me know what you thought of this episode, and if you remember it too. Well, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.